Mama kau ingin. Ah? Bukan mau ingin. Good morning. Um, in this video, uh, we're going to discuss the different solid defects, no? And its application in the industry. So let me show you the, you know, the PowerPoint. So you can, you can find this material on chapter 4 of ano, Halister. So this is imperfection in solids. <clears throat> so why do we need to study the imperfection in solids? Um, although although the term imperfection sounds negative, pero basically uh, the the function of the material. Of some material depends on the imperfection. So one example is the the catalyst used in a catalytic converter in automotive vehicle. So as you can as you will see later, the imperfection in solids uh, provide <clears throat> provide adsorption surfaces for for the for the raw material to adhere so that it will be converted into carbon dioxide from carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide. <clears throat> so atomic defects are responsible for reduction of gas pollutant emissions from today's automobile engines. So as you can see in this figure, real, <clears throat> uh, the catalyst is placed in in your in the exhaust system of your vehicle and then um, still remember ex, uh, <clears throat> absorption process so the absorption process you need pores you know so as you can see later the pores are provided by the imperfection in solids <clears throat> so aside from this also integrated circuit microelectronic devices found in our computers your semicon no? Computers, calculators, and home appliances function because of highly controlled concentration of specific impurities <clears throat> that are incorporated into small localized regions of semiconducting materials. So we're going to take a look at uh, imperfection. Uh, this particular imperfection are known as vacancies. So probably in your physics you have encountered these vacancies and and uh, these vacancies is responsible for the semiconductor property of this material. <clears throat> so aside from this uh, cat catalyst, semiconductor, uh, we're, go we're also going to see the effect of imperfection in the strength of the material. So generally, imperfection increases the strength of the material. <clears throat> so it's, it's quite interesting because it's quite counterintuitive, right? Uh, because when you say imperfection, it, it connotes a negative, you know, <clears throat> negative view. But in this particular case, the imperfection uh, gives you functional catalyst, functional semiconductor, and increased strength in material. <clears throat> okay, so the first type of imperfection that we are going to uh, take a look are the vacancy and self-interstitial. So generally, it's, it's the vacancy. Huh? Vacancy, as you can see, this is the figure for vacancy. The vacancy is the one which have uh, uh, application in semiconductor industry. So if you still remember your semiconductor material, silicon, and then the vacancy in silicon uh, makes it conductive or non-conductive. So this is an illustration of a vacancy in perfection. And right here, we have the equation for 
um, the number of vacancy. Usually this NV is the number of vacancy. Usually this is uh, uh, expressed as number of vacancy per cubic meter, no, per unit volume, per cubic meter, per cubic centimeter, per cubic feet, no? This is NV, NV is the number of vacancy. While N, N is the total number uh, of atomic sites. <laughs> so if, if you have the density, no? You have the density of the material or the metal, and of course you, you will know the type of the metal and its molar mass. So I, I hope you can imagine that you can actually calculate using the Avogadro's number, the total number of uh, atoms, no, of a particular metal. <clears throat> right? Yeah, it's because Bawa, if you have density, that would be mass over volume. If, if you're going to consider one cubic meter and you know the density, you can, you can now calculate the mass of the material. If you have the mass, you can simply divide this by the atomic mass or the molar mass of that particular metal and you will have the number of moles. So just simply multiply this by the Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. You will have the total number of atomic sites or the total number of atoms. No? That's N. Tapos, uh, QB, QB right here, is the energy required for the formation of a vacancy. <clears throat> So that's the energy requirement. You know? As you can see, this will this will need some energy because parang you're, you're trying to remove a an atom. Uh, they are at, they are this is a crystal. This is a lower. Uh, if, if this is complete, that would that would give you a lower uh, energy. No, so in order to remove that, you need you need to expend some energy. So that's that's QB. QB is the energy required for the formation of a vacancy. And then, of course, the temperature here is the absolute temperature in Kelvin. So the higher the temperature, the greater energy is required. No? Ah, the, the greater energy is available. So it's inversely proportional to the temperature. <clears throat> of course, this reminds you of a, an equation in physical chemistry. Uh, this is the Boltzmann distribution law. No? This is similar to your Boltzmann distribution law. So that's why the, the K right here is the Boltzmann constant. No? So the value of K is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per atom per Kelvin. No? So basically, if you still remember your physical chemistry, the sum of M -M, this is just R gas constant divided by the Avogadro's number. No? In K so that's that's about 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms per mole. So you will have joules per atom per Kelvin. You know, 1.38 times 10 to the negative, uh, uh, negative 23 joules per atom per Kelvin. That's the Boltzmann constant. Right? This is Boltzmann distribution. Uh, NB over N is a probability value. You no. Know? the probability value. <clears throat> uh, and then in terms of ano, uh, electron volts, this is 8.62 times 10 to the minus 5. So pag electron volts yung tinatanong sa problem, you, you can use this constant uh, constant value for K. Okay, so review lang. Ano? K is R, that's the gas constant divided by Avogadro's number. So this 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23 is actually 8.31 for joules, joules per mole per Kelvin divided by 6.02 times 10 to, to the 23. This is Avogadro's number, atoms per mole. No? So as I've said before, the application of this particular uh, defect, solid defect, is in semiconductors. Okay, so let's let's try to solve a, a sample problem. This is example problem 4.1. You are asked to calculate the number of vacancies per cubic meter for copper at 1000 degrees Celsius. The energy for vacancy formation is 0 0.9 EV per atom. So that's, that's your QB. You know? The atomic weight and density at 1000 degrees Celsius per copper are 63.5 grams per mole. 
and 8.4 grams per cubic centimeter respectively. <clears throat> so we have the molar mass of copper and the density of copper. No? So the first thing that we calculate nga right here, right here is the number of um, atoms per cubic meter. Okay? Atoms per cubic meter. So you know, actually, you know, na lang yung isang equation. Ano? You can you can easily justify this equation by using dimensional analysis. You know? So 6.02 times 10 to 3 is your Avogadro's number, atoms per mole. And then 8.4 is the density, grams per cubic centimeter. And then uh, this is the conversion of a cubic meter to cubic centimeter. That is 100,000. Ano? Parang 1,000 times 1,000. And then this is the molar mass. So you can justify this equation uh, through dimensional analysis. We try to annotate this. For a while. <clears throat> okay, so let's <clears throat> let's do the uh, dimensional analysis, you know? So, mole will cancel out. Mole will cancel out. Okay, tapos cubic centimeter will also cancel out. Grams will cancel out. So as you can see, you are left with atoms per cubic meter. So that's that's the justification of that equation. You know? But if you don't want to memorize uh, this equation, you can you can do it stepwise. You know? <clears throat> uh, first, use the definition of density. Diba density is, we were trying to calculate the number of atoms per cubic meter, no? The density is simply mass over volume. You know that the density is 63.5 of copper metal, no? Ah, sorry, sorry. It, it should be 8.4 grams per cubic centimeter. <clears throat> so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to calculate the weight of the of one cubic meter of metal eh? in grams. So M is unknown, which is in grams. And then the volume is one cubic meter. So one cubic meter is uh, 1,000 liters or times another 1,000. One cubic meter is 1,000 liters. Tapos, uh, there are 1,000 cubic centimeter per one liter. So, this will give you 8.4 times 10 to the 6 grams. No? Okay, then, then calculate the number of moles. So, the number of moles n is basically mass in grams divided by molar mass. Okay, so this is simply 8.4 times 10 to the 6 grams. And then the molar weight of copper is 63.5 grams per mole. So,
something like ano, no? 1, 3, 2, 2, 83. 1, 3, 2, 2, 83. Yung nga lang, when, when you're doing uh, stepwise calculation, you need to retain, either you, you use the memory or you retain several, at least four, no? several significant figures. Um, so that you will have you will have the correct final answer. Along lalo na sa exam natin, ano? Sa, ano, sa, sa, sa midterm or sa prelims. <clears throat> you usually kasi yung, yung mga tanong exacto yung rounding up niya kasi siyempre computer yung mga gawa. So parang hindi siya nagra-round up <clears throat> in between steps, no? You need to retain several significant figures. Okay. So this is 152,283 moles. And then basically you just multiply this by the Avogadro's number. Ano? So let's multiply this by 6.02 times 10 to the 20. I, I hope you can, you can follow me. This is quite simple. Ano? So you're supposed to get that, ano? yung 8 times 10 to the 28. I'm getting 7.96 times 10 to the 28. So that's approximately 8, no? 8 times 10 to the 28. Okay, so this is atoms per cubic meter. <clears throat> First cubic meter, this, because this is grams per cubic meter. Okay. You know, no? That's why this is moles per cubic meter. So that's why this is atoms per cubic meter. <clears throat> okay, so the next the next step is we're going to use this, this equation. So it's direct substitution. Uh, after calculating N, that's 8.0 times 10 to the 28 atoms per cubic meter. And then uh, QB is given as 0 0.9 UV per atom. And then K is 8.62 times 10 to the minus 5. Siyempre, ito yung gagamitin natin K. And then the temperature is 1,000 degrees Celsius plus 273. That's 1273. And then basically use your calculator. Let's confirm that answer. 8 exponent 28 times... Uh, That's C raised to negative 0.9 all over 8.62 exponent minus 5 is 1 to 7. I'm getting 2.19. So that's 2.2 times 10 to the 25. No? So this is the correct answer. I hope you arrive at the same answer. <clears throat> okay. So let's take a look at some other uh, solid defects no? or imperfections. Okay, next is, this is the next defect, eh? type of defect, self-interstitial. So as you can see, a self-interstitial from this figure, uh, it differs from the vacancy because the atom is still present. No? Uh, but basically, it is, uh, it is occupying a space known as interstitial space. So the interstitial space is the vacant space between the atoms. So, as you can see, in this particular example, uh, the interstitial space is quite smaller than the atom. So, it will require quite higher energy. You know? So, if we're going to apply the Boltzmann equation, the Boltzmann distribution equation, 
the QB will be very high. So relatively, no, uh, this sub-interstitial phenomena is much uh, lesser no, in terms of occur occurrence no, as compared to vacancy. So uh, this is just, <clears throat> there's no application for this defect. So it's just academic to know that, you know, it's just interesting to know that there's such a defect as self-interstitial. So a self-interstitial is an atom from the crystal that is crowded into an interstitial site. A small void space that under ordinary self promises is not occupied. The illustration. You know? The formation of this defect is not highly probable and it exists in very small concentration which are significantly lower than for vacancies, as I mentioned previously. Okay, and then let's, at this point, we're going to discuss the different uh, dislocation effects in solid. So first, we're going to take a look at edge dislocation, then screw type dislocation, and then mix. So when you say mix, you have the edge and the screw type dislocation. Okay, so first is edge dislocation. <clears throat> so as you can see in this in this ano, illustration, uh, the edge on the lower part of this crystal is moved towards the center, no? Both of the both of the sides. So this is an example of edge dislocation. So why is edge dislocation possible? It's it's because as you can see in this particular example. One of the lines, one of the lines of the atom is missing. So, so that's why the edge of the crystal moves towards the center. So this is edge dislocation. So another example of dislocation is screw dislocation. So in this particular example, somehow this, the crystal is moved. No, uh, to the to this to the upper and the lower part of the crystal. Is seems to be moved on different direction, so so that as you can see, uh, <clears throat> this side of the crystal has a has a excess edge, no? While the other side is missing some atoms. Okay. <clears throat> So, if we're going to take a look at this, at the top, as you can see, this is the, this one, no? And then you can, you can see the, you can see the missing atoms right here. Pero as you can see, the, the, ano, the, the arrangement of the atoms is not on a straight line, you know? uh, They become slanted because of the screw dislocation, screw type dislocation. Okay. So another type of dislocation, of course dislocation is a solid defect, is, is Ah, this is the, the, the combination of the first two dislocations. You know? The combination of the screw dislocation and the edge dislocation. So this is known as the mixed dislocation. So as you can see right here, we have the screw dislocation right here. And then you have a missing line. You have a missing line of atoms right there. So at the same time, you have the screw dislocation. So this is a mixed dislocation. No? You see this missing line of atoms? So that's why the edge moves towards here. And instead of having a, a hollow part right here, it's, it's now a straight line because you have a missing line over there. No? So this is mixed dislocation. Okay. So why, why are we interested in... You know, in this um, 
this location are this can this be uh, measured in in reality so this is a transmission electron micrograph of titan titanium alloy no in which the dark lines are these locations so ano to electron micrograph electron microscope picture no ng titanium alloy so as you can see these dark lines are these locations so why are we interested uh, in this this location in this uh, solid defects because generally it affects the strength of the material no? uh, it is quite counterintuitive pero this this location this uh, solid defects enhance the strength of the material so one major example is the sterling silver <clears throat> So, sterling silver is made up of 92.5% silver and 7.5% copper alloy. So, why, why do we mix copper to silver to form sterling silver? In normal Indian uh, environments, pure silver is highly, corro is highly corrosion resistant but also very soft. No? So, you know, you can do it or sing sing, you can do it, you know? So yung bawa you're going to design such like this one, you know, intricate design. So mawawala yung design niya kung malambot siya. Kulang yung kanyang uh, purpose. Ano mawawala yung purpose niya? Mawawala yung function niya. So ang effect, pag naglagay ng alloy, alloying with copper significantly enhances the mechanical strength without depreciating the corrosion resistant appreciation. You know, the, 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 the hardness of silver is increased when you mix this with, with copper alloy. <clears throat> Siyempre, you have, you have a different metal. There will be, there will be ano, solid defects. There will be dislocations. No? So generally, dislocation, ang effect niya is increase the mechanical strength. <clears throat> Okay, and then aside from this location, we also have interfacial defects. When you say interfacial defects, these are, these are, ano, these are, you have boundaries, no? Your metal have boundaries, your crystal have boundaries. Pero if somehow you mix, you mix this uh, different crystals like in polycrystalline, <coughs> you will have interfacial defects in solid, you know? So interfacial defects are boundaries that have two, <clears throat> that have two dimensions and normally separate regions of the material that have different crystal structure and or crystallographic orientation. So alimbawa, this is boundary number one, this is boundary number two, but somehow they are next to each other, then this is defined as interfacial defects. No? So as you will see later, uh, these interfacial defects have application in catalysts. Catalysts are materials that hasten up the reaction. So you will, you will see later that because of these interfacial defects, the catalysts have adsorption surfaces wherein the raw material or the reactants can be deposited so that the chemical reaction will occur much faster. No? So, then, ganun yung application itong interfacial defects. Okay, so let's, there are different examples of this. I know we're going to take a look at external surfaces, interfacial defects, grain boundaries, no? interfacial defects, base boundaries, no, uh, <clears throat> when you say phase boundaries, hindi lamang yung limited siyempre sa ano, hindi lang yung limited sa solid at saka liquid, no? So, if you still remember your physical chemistry, uh, di ba, pag BCC, handaan nyo pa ba yung BCC natin sa chapter 3, at saka FCC, although pareha silang solid, pero ang consideration dyan ay they are different phases, kahit pareha ng solid, no? So, ganun. Ganun yung nangyayari. Parang ba, isang buong solid, pero merong BCC, merong FCC, may HCP, 
iba-iba yung ano nun, iba-iba yung phases nun. <clears throat> twin boundaries, actually this is an example of twin boundaries. Ano? Uh, when when you have boundaries that are mirror images of each other, ano? So these are twin boundaries. We're going to discuss this later. And then stacking faults. No? So we're going to discuss this one by one. <clears throat> okay, external surfaces. So when you form a composite, from probably if you're going to form a composite, so you're going to, to merge some external surfaces of crystals. So one of the most obvious boundaries, I know, now we're going to form composites. So now you have uh, the yami, no, you, you have uh, uh, mini mix of the yami. You try to fiber you, no, no. Bawa, you try to mix it with uh, gypsum, no? So, yun, yung, yung external surface ng diami, ng fiber, at saka yung external surface ng uh, gypsum, siyempre, mag-form mag kayo ng solid defects doon, no? <clears throat> so, so, one of the most obvious boundaries is the external surface along which the crystal structure terminates, no? Surface atom are not bounded to the maximum number of nearest neighbors. Okay? Kasi di ba pag nasa gitna, ang, ang binding niya sa taas at saka sa baba. Pero pag nandun ka sa surface, ang binding mo sa baba lang. Kaya naman kung bottom atom siya, ang binding mo sa taas lang. No? And are therefore in higher energy state than the atoms of the interposition. So may surface tension kasi yan. Kaya you have higher energy you know, sa surface. So that's the process the external surface uh, solid defect. <clears throat> the bands of these surface atoms that are not satisfied give rise to a surface energy expressed in units of energy per unit area. Okay, so yung band the hindi na form, uh, it causes high energy dun sa surface. Ano? Okay, so to reduce this energy, Materials tend to minimize, if at all possible, the total surface area. So, ganun yung ginagawa. No? So, for example, sa liquid. Liquid assume a shape of minimal area. So, that's why yung droplets becomes spherical. Alam nyo na naman yan. Ano? Kaya lang, sa solid, syempre, hindi naman siya malleable. Hindi siya kamukha ng liquid na magpo-form ng, magpo ng droplets. So, strain. Ano? Strain yung surface ng solid. No? Of course, this is not possible with solids. These are mechanically rigid. So, yun yun. Yun yung higher energy in surface. No? Yun yung effect na nun. Hindi siya stable. Okay, next, we have grain boundaries. Yung grain boundaries naman, uh, usually this occur in polycrystalline materials. No? So, kahit naman, halimbawa, the same material yan, Kung minsan magkakaiba pa rin yung uh, type ng ano nila, ng crystals nila. So, halimbawa, yung isa BCC, yung isa HCP, yung isa FCC. <clears throat> Pero somehow, as you can see, nag align pa rin sila. So, magiging isang buong solid pa rin sila. Pero, meron pa rin solid defect. No? So, these are grain boundaries. So, as you can see, uh, Right here, you have one type of crystal. And then, hindi smooth, ano? Meron tayo ditong uh, grain boundary. So, ito yun, ano? So, if you're going to rotate this, this material at this, with respect to this line, at this line, you rotate mo sila. If you will imagine, you will, you will have a single crystal. So, ito yung angle of this alignment, ano? Minsan malaki yan. In this particular case, may kitna. Okay, so this is, you have here a high angle grain boundary and then right here you have a small angle grain boundary. And then usually this occurs in polycrystalline. Saan nyo ba narinig yung word na polycrystalline? Monocrystalline. Sa solar panels. Ano? We have, we have polycrystalline, that's the old type of, ano? That's the lower price solar, solar cell. Ano? Uh, then the monocrystalline are the more efficient uh, higher price solar solar panels. Okay? So I hope you, you get the um, grain boundaries, solid defects. 
Next is the ano, phase boundary, phase boundary uh, solid defect. So phase boundary exists in multi-phase material. <laughs> A different phase uh, exists wherein a, a different phase exists on each side of the boundary. You know? Phase boundaries exist in multi-phase material, wherein a different phase exists on each side of the boundary. Kung ano sinasabi ko sa inyo? Of course, we're talking only here of solid. Pero sa solid, possible kasi na merong BCC na part, tapos merong HCP na part. Okay? So kaya nagkakaroon ng phase boundaries. Kasi yung kahit na pareho silang solid, pag BCC at saka FCC, ang, ang consideration dun sa, ano, sa physical chemistry, are, they are different phase pa rin. No? Next is twin boundary. So twin boundary is a special type of grain boundaries across which there is a specific mirror lattice symmetry. No? So as you can see, you know, these two, these are the boundaries, you know, the long boundaries, and then they are together. No? So they form a twin boundary because as you can see, this is this is a mirror image of this boundary, you know? Yun yun. Pag pa, i-forward nyo tong isa, forward nyo tong isa, and then uh, imagine na ito ay nasa mirror, ito yung totoong figure, and then you can say that the boundaries are mirror images. Yung boundary lang naman ng mirror image, no? I, I hope you're getting that one, description. That is atoms on one side of the boundaries are located in a mirror image position of the atoms on the other side. Ito, itong line na to, it, hindi yung buong ano ha, hindi yung buong crystal. Itong line na to, mirror image niya, itong line na to, sa kabila. Sa kabilang crystal. So that's why these are known as twin boundaries. Okay? So for, for the application of, of this uh, boundary defects, no? So right here we have the uh, electron microscope feature of of the catalyst using catalytic converter. No, so <clears throat> this compound. No, makita eh. This is CE something something. You know? uh, this material is using catalytic converter for for automobiles. You know? um, concept wise. This is supposed to be what's happening, you know? You have terrace. Alam niyo naman yung terrace, ano? Siguro may terrace kayo sa bahay niyo. Parang balkon, di ba? And you have the ledge. So yung ledge yun yung parang side, no? Yung parang wall. You have the ledge. And then you have the crevice, pro advice, you know? So yung crevice parang concave, no? Parang con con concave siya na ano, na, na part ng ledge. Parang may butas. So dito sa crevice na to, may vacancy siya, no? So basically doon papasok yung yung atom. Yung atom ito yung parang raw material. Halimbawa, yung carbon dioxide, doon siya papasok. No? So yun, in, in this particular figure yun yung atom. Okay? So medyo ano lang pero somehow ito yung ito yung ledge, ito yung ledge part, ito yung side. Tapos ito yung terrace, no? Ito yung taas niya. Tapos ito yung, ito yung vacancy, ito yung previous. Tapos doon pumapasok yung atom. So ganyan, that's, that's why the, the catalyst in catalytic converter performs function. Because of the, because of the, ano, uh, the boundary defects. No? So, sabi ko naman sa inyo, no? uh, although defects yung ginagamit na term, pero uh, that's the main reason kung bakit na pe-perform yung mga functions. So this is the third application, diba? Catalysis. Yung pangalawa natin diniscuss dun sa <clears throat> dun sa ano dun sa dislocation naman ay strength, no? Tapos dun sa unang-una naman dun sa vacancy ay semiconductor. Okay? Then along the way, makita niyo naman palaging ginagamit yung electron microscope, no? Sa <clears throat> sa material science. Okay, so probably that's that's all for this. Ano, konti na lang yung natitira sa chapter 4. <clears throat> and then probably pwede na siguro ang material siya for ano. Pag natapos natin yung chapter 4, pag pwede na material siya for ano. For, for prelims. Ano? So I'm going to push your prelims sooner. <clears throat>
soon maybe within this week so bye bye na muna see you on the next video